Hey everyone, Samantha here. Welcome to another episode of Trans IRL. I don't get to talk to TV stars very often, so tonight is definitely a rare treat. I'm very excited to introduce tonight's guest, but first I wanted to take a quick minute to thank Dr. Kia Champa for his time on our show last week. If you missed it, we had a really great conversation with him about his work in facial feminization surgery, and we actually answered a record number of questions for this show. So if you have any interest in the topic, please feel free to check out the replay. It is available on our YouTube page. Joining me in the director's chair, as always, is Stephen. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a terrific show uh, last week, and we were able to field so many different questions. Uh, it was really wonderful, and that's what's great about uh, being able to do these live. Uh, you know, a, tr a true interaction with uh, uh, the medical professionals and everybody else who's been on. Uh, you know, so we look forward to doing uh, more of those. And it was just, uh, it was great to be able to field so many questions. I think we field about two dozen questions uh, in that first. It was quite uh, a few. In that first. Uh, first hour there so that was uh that was great so uh so thanks for joining us also and thank you to all of our uh, youtube regulars who have already kind of populated the chat and a big thank you to our guest who also is pimping the chat this evening uh and and saying hello before we even uh, got started <laughs> All right. As always, Stephen will be monitoring the live chats on YouTube and Facebook. So if you do have any questions for our guests, make sure to submit them there. But with that, let's go ahead and get into tonight's show. Our guest is Ellie Desitel. You might recognize them from NBC's series Rise. They play the role of Michael, a transgender high school student who over the course of the series explores their identity and presents a positive and well-rounded experience of what it means to be transgender. Ellie, thank you so much for joining us on the show here tonight. Yeah, of course. How's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty well. Um, uh, this is really exciting. You know, I've had a lot of feedback from uh, people who follow the page about your role on Rise. Um, it was such a positive example of you know, trans representation by an actual trans individual. I know of at least one person who has told me personally that your visibility on that show helped them understand their own need to transition. And that's, that's huge, yeah. you know, that's such an honor. And I was wondering, really you know, cool. what does that mean to you that there are people out there that, you know, look to this character for inspiration in their own journeys? Oh, it means the world to me. And I think back to when the show was airing and all of the uh, messages I was getting on Instagram, the private messages I was getting of people saying like, you know, thank you so much. You're helping not only me, you're helping my parents. They're understanding me better. Or you know, there was even one person who was like, Michael is already a family name and just watching you and your character, like I've chosen that name for myself. So yeah, oh there was a lot of awesome feedback that truly, truly meant the world to me. It was very, it was just so genuine, the the response, and um, that's what I was hoping for. And that is, I mean, it's just incredible. You know, anytime I get any positive feedback online or in person from, from individuals who have looked at, you know, what I've done online, um, you know, it, it means so much to me. Every Every message where somebody feels a little more secure in themselves. Um, and they let me know that I was a part of them figuring that out. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's an honor really yeah. to be able to be that person for somebody. Yeah, truly. And I think that I, I know the person you just previously mentioned who said that they were affected by me and that's how they kind of like help them figure out their journey. Um, I think I know exactly who you're talking about because they reached out to me too. Awesome. I'm glad they did. Uh, but let's take a step back, you know, from your role on Rise and talk a little bit about your earlier experiences and growing up and what led you to, you know, eventually become an actor. Sure. Um, well, I think uh, if I if I look back into like the, my earlier life when I was like a kid and um, I, I was I I did I started dancing from a young age. I just took dance class and did the dance recitals that whole deal. Um, I did that when I was two, and I did that until eighth grade. Um, and I, it's funny because I never really liked going to dance. Um, and my, we could probably get into like the um, odd insecurities I felt at that time before even knowing that I was trans, but. Um, that I've just actually recently been thinking about. But anyway, I, I preferred performing out of anything. I didn't like the rehearsal process. I just wanted to be on the stage. 
And in high school, I did, you know, the little things um, in theater that they offered. Uh, we did adaptations, which is like we just like took a play or a movie or something and ad- adapted it into a, a little short snippet of a play, I guess. I did that, and only my senior year I did the spring musical. And it wasn't yeah. until I was in college that I realized I would be interested in doing acting full time because I went in originally doing music because I'd been playing trumpet since I was in third grade. So I did band, I did marching band. That was my whole life in high school. Like that's what I did. And I know you're 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 a band geek too. Yeah. I'm totally a band geek yeah. and I march trumpet and I play trumpet all through high school and through college. So that's awesome. Oh, I wish I could have done it through college. I wanted to find some place that did band, but yeah, so that was my life. Um, and I went in cause I went into college thinking I had to major in something and I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know I could go in, you know, undeclared. Nobody told me that. So, um, so yeah, I did music for a little bit and I was like, oh, I cannot do this as my passion. <laughs> it is not my thing. Like music theory, tearing it apart, that wasn't it for me. And that's when I realized it was the performance part that I that I was into. It was really just performing. And um, even like just playing trumpet, it did sort of feel like I was playing a role. Um, I mean, looking back, not the time, I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but it definitely was. It was definitely playing a role in band. And uh, yeah, it wasn't until the end of my sophomore year that I decided I was going to do theater. Um, and I decided to do theater specifically because I wanted to pursue acting on camera. Um, I don't know. I, I've always said if we had an acting for the camera major, I would have done it. But I, I've always said that. And I don't, I don't know if, if I would have because doing theater was so great for me. And I learned so much about myself as a performer, as an actor, and I had such great dedicated professors. It was a pretty small school, so we had a lot of one-on-one interaction. And yeah, I am definitely so glad that I found theater. Not that I found it in college. I already was doing it in high school, and I was always told that I could do it by like the high school director. Um, so people saw what I had before I even realized that's what I had, you know, I had that I had the talent for Mm. acting. So, um, yeah, I, I just saw the, I, when I was in high school, when I was in uh, college, like I think my sophomore year, like the middle of my sophomore year, before I made a decision, I saw, uh, fifth estate. I don't know if it's called the fifth estate or fifth estate with Benedict Cumberbatch, just some, some movie. It's not even like his greatest role, but I already liked him in Sherlock. And so when I saw him in fifth estate, which he's vastly different in, I was just blown away and inspired by him. And I was like, that's, I, wait, I can do that. <laughs> I was like, wait, people act in movies and in TV shows in real life. Like, that's what they do. I could do that. And so that's what I went out for. And then I never looked back. I was like, I didn't have a plan B. I, I just knew. I was like, I'm, this is my decision and I'm not going back. So that's how I became an actor. <laughs> that's how you really got into your, your acting career. Um, about the same time, though, when you're in college, this is about the time you started uh, questioning your gender as well and your, your identity. So when did you first realize that you identified as, as transgender and as genderqueer? Um, my journey was so, so I, I guess I have to say the word ambiguous because it wasn't like linear. It was so, it's such a blur, like thinking back on how it all happened, figuring it out. Um, but it started after I met Ren. Um, I met Ren actually also the end of my sophomore year. Uh, and we met on Tumblr and then we rela- we talked for a little while and we realized we lived really close and then we met up and th- that's history. Um, <laughs> the rest is history. And, uh, and yeah, I guess it was kind of through talking to Ren and being exposed to, queer people on Tumblr and trans people and non-binary people on Tumblr um, that I sort of slowly started to realize that I was probably not a girl. That's sort of how it started. It was like, yeah, I think I'm not a girl. Don't know what that means yet, but I think that that's, I think this is a starting point. Um, And I do definitively remember that it was because Ren had talked about how 
maybe he was trans and maybe he was non-binary. And then, you know, we were both kind of exploring what all this means on our own and together. And I could not be more grateful that I was in this relationship with who I knew I was going to spend the rest of my life with. Um, I just knew, you know, on like the first date. And it was just such a secure place for me to figure out my transness. Um, And I am sure he feels the same way. It was just like a really easy, non-judgmental space to kind of explore pronouns, explore terms like, hey, can you use, can you like call me your boyfriend today? Or, um, you know, can you like use he, him on me today? Just to like test things out and sort of try it out. And it was just like, that's that's sort of how I figured it out. And it took like three years. Uh, I was, uh, well, I actually spent five years at college. So it was my fourth year, I think. No, maybe my fifth year. Yeah, because it was my, yeah, yeah. So it was my second year when I met Ren. So my fifth year in college is sort of when I was like, okay, a gender flux. And it took a really long time to figure out that point. And I knew that because I have always sort of teetered on the line of masculinity and femininity and it really just depends on the day and like not the day it really depends on like it takes I guess I go through like these flux phases every now and then where I'm like I want to be mask or I want to dress more mask or I want to dress more femme and it's like it's it's a little of a confusing time when I get in those you know funks trying to figure out oh what am I doing I want I, I need more femme clothes or I need more mask clothes and it's just like that's how I figured out a gender flux. I was like, oh, I'm definitely that. But absolutely, no, like, it's no gender before. I think it's really unique that you had that environment where you could really explore that. And that's something that not a lot of trans people necessarily have access to, um, at least from, in my experience in, in talking with a lot of people, where a lot of people have to figure out a lot of this in secret. So I'm, I'm a little yeah. jealous that you had somebody there next to you that you could actually lean on and sort of pitch ideas to and, and, and work through some of those finer details. Because honestly, we all do that. We all have to go through those steps to really understand our identity. At least I, I think we owe it to yeah. ourselves to do that. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to just say, you know, boom, this is, this is who I am without really looking at yourself closely. But uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's great. And I'm, I'm really happy that you had that person close to you there to help you work through the, those early days and trying to yeah, me too. Uh, figure out your identity. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. And it also, I mean, I to talk- that at the oh. time I was figuring out my transits through my acting. Um, I got to then, you know, talk to my professor and when I, I know I remember coming out to my professor and being like, can you please tell the faculty for me? Cause I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> and, but at that time I, I was like, can I, can I play the male roles in class? Like, cause I, I don't want to limit myself at all to what I get to play in theater. And so that was also really the start of like, um, exploring myself, exploring my gender through theater while figuring out fully, like figuring out what terms felt best. And it was a very like blurry time period of figuring out I was trans and exactly what term felt best. And, you know, it's always, I feel like maybe it's the case for a lot of people who are non-binary. Like it's, oh gosh, there's so many things that I I could be in, you know, I, I there's all these labels that I can look at to just try to use to identify what I am feeling. And so acting definitely helped with that. I think that's great that you had that tool there to experiment and to, to work through some of those feelings. I am curious, mm-hmm. you know, being someone who identifies as non-binary, uh, I'm a very binary trans person. Do you feel that there is enough representation of gender fluid, gender queer, agender people um, in the media, online, out there? Because in my, from my perspective, you know, I see a lot of of very binary individuals out there who are represented, and I see very few non-binary folks or folks who are more towards the middle of the spectrum who are as visible. And I'm curious your your view on that and your take on that. Sure. Um, Well, definitely, I noticed a lack of representation when I was in my fifth year of college. Um, 
specifically, I noticed it because I had started to study um, representation of trans people in the media. Um, I had to also, you know, I started to study it for my senior thesis um, paper. I had to lean into also representation in theater because that was my major. I wanted to talk only about, you know, film and TV, um, which I mainly did. There was like a spattering of theater in my, <laughs> in my paper. Um, but definitely at that time, I had, I, we only had like Asia K. Dillon at that point playing a non-binary role on TV. And that had sort of just happened in 2017. I think it was 2017. Um, and so that's sort of when I realized, where are we all? And it's only been through, um, you know, time and, and searching for non-binary people in the media that I've noticed there are, a, oh, I guess I'm, I'm like using this word, there are like a spattering few of us that I've come across very often, like on my social media, um, in ads, uh, in, you know, on TV, whatever. Um, I see a lot of non-binary people now, but it's really mainly because I'm seeking that out to, you know, get in contact with these people and kind of create a community and somehow, you know, become like friends with them. So I don't really know what it's like anymore. <laughs> to be looking at media and not see those people um so like to me it's it's weird to it's weird because there i do see a lot of non-binary people but then again i know that's just because of the concentration that i that i that i'm looking for on, on in media you know I, there's this very specific thing you know i'm looking for non-binary you know models actors performers you know all kinds of folks that i find them but that's not the case for everybody. No, there's not, not everybody is like centering in on those kinds of folks in the media. So there isn't enough of us. And I do know that it's just hard to see from my perspective anymore. So, and it's been a while it's, since I've been I'll studying agree with that. that too. <laughs> you know, it's funny because <laughs> when, when you're so like myself, I'm so engaged in the trans community. It's like, wait, when was the last time I talked to somebody who doesn't identify as trans in person? You know, it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, because you, you surround yourself with people, you, you know, you look for people who are like yourself and you, you build that community, but you, you do wonder if it, um, it blinds you from what other people see when they're, when they're not so closely entwined in the community. Right. I mean, and it shows in the, um, <clears throat> you know, the glad media, reports, like the GLAAD media TV reports, um, it shows that there's still such a small percentage of, you know, of trans women in movies that aren't the butt of the joke, you know, there's still, you know, there's still such a small percentage of trans characters that are portrayed positively. Um, and it, and it shows if you look at those statistics, so it's still happening there. And it's, you know, I, I, I've actually just started to realize that I need to to remember that and to keep, you know, looking at those statistics and keep updating myself on those reports because I'm just so um, involved in trans media, wherever it is, it does sort of feel like that's all the media I take in. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, trans representation is increasing in the media and actual trans people playing trans people in shows or movies is increasing, but there still is a lot of focus on trans people playing people who are trans where being trans is an integral part of their storyline, right? We don't right. see a lot of people who are, you know, they're trans, but that's not why they're important to the story. Um, yeah. But I mean, there's, there's two ways of looking at it, right? Obviously there's an importance in telling trans narratives and sharing those stories out there. But I think it's just as important that over time we start seeing more people who happen to be trans, but you know, in this movie, they're a car salesman or whatever else, right? Because trans people are everywhere. Yeah. I mean, that was that's what was so important about my character on Rise. I felt, um, you know, it's when you watch it in the first few episodes, you know, it is a lot about, you know, Michael being trans, but in a way it's so, so positive because he just gets so he just gets immediately accepted, you know, he gets it's immediately immediately accepted right away by the troop. And, you know, he he overcomes this 
you know, barrier of dressing in the boys' ba- boys uh, dressing room for the first time, and it's totally not a big deal. But it's a huge deal to him, and you get to see that. Um, but then later on, you know, we get to see Michael experience a bit of hardship with his friend who he put distance, you know, he put distance between them and he hasn't hung out with her in a long time. And she's been going through a lot and he didn't get to see that because he was like, I've got to figure out my transness and I just kind of want to do that on my own. And so he pushed her away, but we get this storyline of, you know, she, she goes through, I mean, I could, I don't want to spoil it if people haven't watched it. And I know there's a lot of people that haven't, so I won't spoil it too much. Um, but she, you know, ends up getting herself into a bit of a, uh, a rut situation. Um, and he, and she lets him into that and you get to see both of them navigate this very, um, very intense, mature situation that teenagers, um, a lot of teenagers unfortunately have to experience. Um, but it's really great to see that Michael is not just trans. Michael is this supportive friend who happens to be trans and is going through this difficult thing with his friend. Um, so that was what was super great about um, my character is that we didn't just do the trans story and we didn't do a transition story, which I thought was really, really uh, rare. We don't, see a lot of trans people that at least you know don't at least get an episode about like testosterone or surgery or looking at themselves in the mirror you know michael did none of that and i thought that that was really an important side of transness for an audience to see and honestly oh i'm just so humbled that i got to do that and i you know i got to give some input into the script sometimes to make sure that it was going the right way and it was going in a way that I had never seen before. Yeah. And see, that's incredible. And that's not something that's, you know, extremely common where an an actor can, you know, throw that input in there. So it's amazing that you had a crew, you had a a producer, directors and writers that were willing to work with you to, to listen to what you had to say. I think that's incredible. It's the kind of stuff I love to hear. Um, I know it's definitely not universal out there, but that is, that is awesome. Yeah. It was really awesome. I mean, Jason Kadams, I could speak good words about that man for the rest of my life because he is just so amazing. He listens to everybody and I, not just me about, you know, the trans experience and my trans experience. Like he, he listened to all of that, but he also listened to everybody else's input on their characters. He's just very, he wants to tell truthful stories and that's what was so much fun about working with him. And that's why it's such an incredible role and such an incredible result in the show. So if you are out there and you haven't seen it yet, I hope you do get a chance to watch it. And what a better time to sit down and watch (laughs) an entire series than during a quarantine, right? That's what I've been saying. And there's only one season, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Just knock it out. Uh, But I did want to ask too, just around your, your acting in general, I am curious and I don't know, this is sort of a tough question because you've you've basically been out as trans your entire acting career, or at least your professional acting mm-hmm. career. But how do you feel that your your gender identity does affect your career as an actor? Oh gosh. So it's been really difficult. Um, I could get emotional. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna refrain from that. Um, it's been very difficult since Rise ended. I did sort of feel like when our show was canceled that I was going to get picked up right away um, by another show. And it's, you know, I since Rise, I've done theater, um, which is wonderful. Um, but my focus, my career focus is film and TV. Um, I mean, I want to act wherever I have the opportunity to act. And I got the wonderful opportunity um, this past fall to go to Iowa and do a play with actually ran my fiance's um, half brother. So my soon to be uh, brother-in-law, um, I got to do a play with him where the lead was um, a non-binary uh, trans masculine person. So like, and, and it was, I, I cannot talk about that show enough. We can get into it if you want later, but I, I Oh my God, it was like the best experience of my life. However, It wasn't until last summer that I did theater for the first time since college. Um, And Rise was canceled in May 2018. 
And so when that happened, it was kind of a shock to everybody who was involved in the show because we all thought we were getting another season. Uh, and yeah, so for a while, uh, I was just kind of waiting for the next thing, waiting for the next thing and just kind of stopped my life. And I'm glad that it didn't go on for too long. I'm glad that I started doing theater. I'm glad that I got a part-time job because I was really just not doing anything and feeling uh, like I, I was just waiting for something to fall into my lap and that just wasn't going to happen. Um, I always felt that I wasn't getting stuff because it was more difficult because I was trans. So, um, because I, you know, had to, you know, I, I'd noticed that a lot of my castmates from Rise were getting other things. And I was sort of one of the last folks to not land at least a small thing. And I couldn't help but think I was the only trans person on the show. And I am the, I'm the only one not getting parts right now. And so I, I, I don't really have any way of proving that that's the reason I wasn't getting, you know, roles. I was auditioning for trans roles. I was auditioning for um, non-binary roles. I was auditioning for everything, really. I auditioned for everything. I go out for, you know, cis girl roles. I go out for cis guy roles sometimes, which I find pretty hysterical. Like, a lot of them don't really fit me. So, but anyway, you know, I was, I, di I didn't, I can't really say that being trans is what was keeping me from getting booked. But I kind of can't ignore the fact that I was the only trans person and I was also the only one not getting booked. So it does yeah. feel I mean, I like such a challenge. Um, and I can also get into, you know, the fact that so many um, trans actors are not getting booked for any, for like cis, you know, written roles, for like gendered roles. Um, and I don't, I, I really can't explain why that is, but we do get booked for like trans roles and like non-binary roles. But even in those roles, there are, you know, casting as cis actors, that's happening less and less, but they're still considering cis actors for those roles. And so it's like, right. if those are the only roles we can get, and there's so few of them, it, it is kind of a struggle to get work. Yeah, and I think that you know, from what I've heard from other trans actors and actresses out there, that it's similar similar experiences. I feel yeah. like unless there's those very, very narrow focused trans roles, I see a lot of people who are getting looked over for for cis actors for roles where a trans actor or actress could just as easily step in and and do a fantastic job. Right, but it's and tough, I find right? a lot of you know, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that, you know, it's hard to like outright, you know, prove like, ha, this is the reason why, but, you know, you just have to listen to the narratives that are out there and you listen to the experiences of other trans uh, actors and it's not an isolated incident. It's not. That's true. Yeah. And it's also, um, it's, it's also really, oh, shoot. Maybe we can go ahead because I don't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh, no, you're, you're, you're fine. Um, but I, I was curious, you know, looking ahead in your career, like what are some of those projects out there that you would really like to sink your teeth into if, if an opportunity came along the way? Oh, for sure. Um, well, I've had uh, the opportunity to audition for to Star Trek um, series. So I auditioned for Picard and I also auditioned for Star Trek Discovery. Um, so that's really exciting. Uh, I, I had a callback for one of them. I didn't quite, uh, I didn't quite snag that. So that was that was really hard to to accept. Um, I am such a big Star Trek fan. I'm a huge Trekkie. So doing Star Trek eventually is so so important to me, and I really really would love to have that opportunity to actually book one of those roles. Oh yeah, but I do remember this is a good segue. There, you know, the the in the character I auditioned for in Picard was um, the description was written in a way that was like, oh, this character can be any gender. And so it's like you get this like really exciting opportunity to be like, oh, wow, they could make this character trans. And they're, you know, they're auditioning me. They're asking to see me. But then I'm also going up against 
any person of any gender. And so that's what's also so difficult. It's like, okay, well, we can make these roles really open to gender, but I feel like at the end of the day, Hollywood is still so rewarding, still still rewarding cis actors with anything. And like the opportunity to cast a cis actor over this trans actor, they will take that opportunity. And it's really, it's, I always wonder why, you know, it's a really very mysterious kind of uh, industry because you don't ever quite get the answers. This is very true. And, and you're left guessing and you're not quite sure what the reason was, which, which stinks, but what an opportunity to, to, you know, have a, have a chance to interview, oh not interview. God. Audition, audition, yeah. audition for the role on uh, on a Star Trek series. That would be so it cool. Was, oh my the, god, it was so much fun because I got to Star actually Trek, like there's, there's always more Star Trek. Us. So yeah, I, I, that's what I keep saying. That's what I keep telling myself. I'm like, well, I'm I am 25, and I think Star Trek's going to continue to be a thing for quite a while. So I think I probably still have a bit of a chance. But what was so great is I got to actually like use the, like starship lingo, and that oh my god, I was <laughs> living for it. That was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, I wanted to give you a chance to talk a little bit about the next steps in your transition and uh, some of the efforts you're doing online right now to do some uh, fundraising. Yeah. So I, um, well, I am set to get top surgery at some point. <laughs> I um, had May 7th as my date, which I had actually previously pushed from April 2nd because of insurance issues. And now obviously COVID-19 has come in and swooped me up as the next, uh, you know, surgery cancellation victim, which I know a lot of people are dealing with canceled surgery dates. Uh, so frustrating. So see, I am, I've heard from my surgeon that, you know, it's, they have a spreadsheet ready for postponed surgeries. So I'm really crossing my fingers that it won't be too long because I do turn 26 in September. So, oh, we'll see. But yeah, so I'm, I'm raising some money on Bonfire, which is a t-shirt campaign sort of thing. Right now I've actually, um, I've, I, I think I've had three or two uh, campaign launches that come and pass um, and I'm, planning on probably opening another one again and so uh if you keep in touch with me on my instagram which is oh you know ellie like all spelled out <laughs> you can find uh information about my um top surgery fundraising and it's going to cover the costs of um you know like my stay up in massachusetts um travel costs and all of that that's awesome yeah. So if you don't already follow Ellie on Instagram, don't forget to give them a follow before you're out of here tonight. Uh, I had one more question for you before we got to our viewer questions. And sure. that is, um, how do you feel that binary trans individuals or even other people in the LGBTQ community can do a better job of lifting up non-binary, genderqueer, agender individuals? That's a great question. Um... I mean, I think that the that language is still so binary, and um, I also find that not enough people are using their, you know, are putting their pronouns in their bio, and this is also a, has a lot to do with, like, cis um, allies. Uh, I think if you're cis and you put your, uh, your pronouns in your bio, it's just really helpful to normalize doing that and asking about pronouns and making pronouns part of the conversation. Um, that's such a great thing uh, that for us, uh, for folks who use alternative pronouns, I guess I could say. Um, so yeah, that's really helpful. But also just like talking in a way that's, that's less gendered, less, you know, like let's not use guys. Let's not use, you know, his or her or ladies and gentlemen like there's so so many different ways to uh to be inclusive in in language and i think that we can all benefit from having a conversation about language and using inclusive language oh i think you said it perfectly there that's important for all of us to do right 
Yeah. But we do have some viewer questions I wanted to get to here. So if you're watching live on YouTube or Facebook and have any questions for Ellie or myself, go ahead and put them in the chat. We'll try to get to as many as we can here. We do have some questions that were submitted earlier in the week through Instagram. So I want to start with those. And the first one is, how are you holding up with the quarantine <laughs> and how is it affecting your acting work? That's a great question. Um, I, I don't feel like the quarantine has affected me too much with my career. Luckily, I've had a couple of self tapes that I've gotten to do, and that's that's kept me having something you know important to do, <laughs> having something to wake up and get ready for, and plan and work on to do some self taping and to get in some good work to the casting directors. So, luckily, it's not affected it too bad. But we also don't know when you know work is going to come up and how we're going to when we're going to start shooting things or you know whenever anything happens we don't know so that's still an unknown yeah, I guess but that's it's at least thing, right pretty, pretty much do everything is shut down right now i know i know i have a friend that's a, was a, that was really set to like just start shooting a new show and they had to postpone it so mm. uh, and i know how, how excited she was to work on it too so well, the good news, though, is that once production starts back up, she should still have that role there, right? Oh, yeah. And she's getting paid right now by them, too, which I think is such a great, oh, such a great thing that they can do when they're not making yeah. money yet. You know, they, it hasn't even, they haven't even shot anything yet, let alone aired. So, yeah, I think that, I, I think a lot of people are being well taken care of. So that's what's, that's something really good about this. That is good. All right. The next question we had here from Instagram. Have you ever provided feedback on how a transgender character is written or portrayed? We talked about this a little bit earlier, a little, bleh, a little bit earlier already, but it sounds like you actually did have a really positive experience on Rise dealing with this. Yeah, I did. And that is the only uh, character I've had, you know, I've been, I've been able to provide feedback for. Um, I, I do really in the future want to uh, see how to become a, um, Oh, what is the word? I, I want to figure out how to how to be that that person. Um, I I wish I could think of the word. Be that person on set to provide information on a trans character. You know, if there's a trans character in a show where they need, you know, they need somebody who can provide really good input on how to portray a character. I feel like I have a lot of. Um, I feel like I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> now, what so is the name of that role? I now, know. Now, I can't. now I'm thinking because I, I know what you're talking about, and I'm hoping somebody it's in the chat throws it in there. What a <laughs> expert on a topic <laughs> is for a show consultant. There it is. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. I and I have looked into it and spoken to some people on how to get into doing that. So maybe someday uh, that would be really, really fun. I would love to do that. That would be incredible. Uh, all right, next question here: How do you handle times when people use the wrong pronouns? That's a great question. Um, I get misgendered daily um, by strangers, and most of the time, it's you know I just let it happen. Because I, I mean, it used to at one point it used to really really affect me, but I understand you know the binary world. I know what I know how the system works, and I hate it. But at the same time, it's like to to go about my day. I have to ignore it, you know. Like at work, I get misgendered one hundred percent of the time. Not by my, but not by my coworkers. Thankfully, they're so so great. So I have. That's also what I have to lean back on. So I guess that's what I, that's how I deal with misgendering. Is you know I get misgendered, but then like my coworkers standing there using they them pronouns for me all day. So that's kind of how I deal with it. Yeah, I having, mean, on having the that support network is so important. Yeah. But yeah, you know, pronouns is such a it's such a personal thing because I've talked with people all over the spectrum from how they handle pronouns and, and when people misgender them or use the wrong pronouns towards them. And I've I've heard from, you know, people who will, you know, shut down traffic over it to people who, you know, just, just let it slide. And, you know, part of that is just where we're at in our own identity and our Yeah self-identification or at least you know how comfortable we are with ourselves right because ultimately yes. if somebody isn't using the right pronouns that's that's a reflection of, of them it's not a reflection of us and it's yeah something that we have to keep in mind right yeah um, yeah that's i, I find that's nice very that true. have it's, it's great you have people at work that you can rely on you've got they've got your back 
So even on those yes. tougher days, you, you've got that support, which which is good. Yeah. yeah, I also just don't like confrontation. So that's why I usually don't talk to people about my pronouns. I'm like, you know what? Well, that's uh, part of it too. I'll just let it go. I don't think it'll affect my day too much. <laughs> All right. The last question we had from Instagram this week was, do you audition for both cis and trans parts? And are you sought out uh, as an actor just because you are out as trans? Interesting. Uh, yes, I do. I audition for anything and everything that comes my way um, because I don't really want to limit myself to what I what I can do. I mean, I am an actor and I can I can play anything. There was a point where I, you know, asked my managers. So I was like, can I just go out for you know trans roles and cis guy roles? And it was at a point that I was sort of feeling a little insecure. I also, had just had a rise pulled out from under me, so that did not help my insecurities. But uh, yeah, I mean, there was a point that I was saying that and. But then it came to me, you know, this I, this thought came to me where like, well, just because I'm playing the role of a cis girl does not mean I'm not trans. It doesn't mean that a tra it doesn't it, like it, the only thing that that shows is that trans actors can play any part. And, you know, people who are watching a show where I'm playing a cis girl, they're still watching a trans person, no matter what character I'm playing. So, uh, yeah, I, I want to take any role that comes comes my way. And uh, what was the other? That's question? awesome. The other one was, are you ever sought out because you, you are out as a trans individual? Right. Um, I mean, I think so. I don't quite have a way of knowing uh, as I am not really on the side of getting the auditions. I, you know, my managers kind of handle all of that and the, you know, the um, dialogue that happens there. Uh, I don't really know. But I do know that I have gone out for some roles that say, please submit only non-binary actors or please submit only trans actors. Um, or, you know, saying, you know, roles that say uh, trans actors preferred or please submit your trans actors for this role as well, like just because they really want to see trans talent. So that's a really great thing. Um, and so, I mean, I guess I can say that I am because I do get auditions that say that, so. All right. And now I've turned my attention over to the YouTube and Facebook chats here, and there's been a pretty good conversation going on over there while oh. we've been chatting here. I wanted to make sure to grab a couple of the questions that I saw in here. Somebody asked um, what they can do on a local level to support trans actors and actresses. Huh. So, so this is someone who was, they said they're not a movie producer, but what can, what can the average ally do to build up and support trans actors yeah um i mean for sure spread the word when you see trans actors in a show or in, on tv or even in in theater you know just lift up the production lift up the series lift up the movie because in turn you are lifting up that trans person and you know you don't even have to say that there's a trans person in it just tell people all about it and then all of a sudden Lots of people are watching a trans actor. And I think that's really where it, really, where it counts. Yeah. That's good. And uh, let's see, there was another question here. Oh, um, somebody asked if you write your own plays. Oh yeah. And my pronouns are they, them, by the way. Look at me, confronting. <laughs> it took a lot of energy. There you go. Um, I, oh, I've sort of, I've tried. So actually in college we had to do a senior thesis um, paper and a senior thesis performance. And I sort of wrote my play. Um, I actually got a lot of real stories from trans people through Tumblr. Um, and I asked them to tell me their stories, like any story. And I got some really wonderfully written stuff. I got some just, you know, typed out, you know, word vomit stories that I that I use because I wanted to use people's word, people's words, word for word. Um, and so that was really, really it was fun. It was just like a, a 20 minutes of trans visibility on stage. Uh, and I even wrote a few um, a few things of my own because I had two cis actors in my play um, symbolizing the cis people in these trans folks lives. Um, and they're just they were just such great actors that I could not give them give them uh, big monologues for themselves. So I actually had my mom write a piece um, about having a trans kid and it was really beautiful. I could cry if I read it right now. And I wrote I wrote out a monologue about my cis actor, my cis actor's character dating a trans woman. And just, you know, all about 
the aspects of her, you know, outside being trans. Because I thought that was important, too. Very cool. So, yeah, that's the only play I've written. It's called uh, Oh, Sweet Child. Hmm. Uh, and I, this last one isn't a question, but it is a comment I wanted to share with you. Let's see if it, here we go. Oh, yay. I wonder if you've spoken to me before. And if you haven't, just reach out to me on Instagram, please. Like, I answer everybody. So I love that. Thank you so much. So a really nice comment there in the chat. I think it I is. got them all there, but... Yeah, we had, we had some good conversations there in the chat. And hey, we had a good conversation here as well. Thank you so much, Ellie, Definitely. for joining me here and sharing your stories and experiences. You know, I think it's so wonderful to see the work you've done out there. I know you're going to get more amazing roles in the future because you. you're just an incredible actor. Um, Thanks. Your future, your future is so bright. And mm -hmm. um, you do us all proud. You, you know, I'm, I'm proud seeing you on camera and on television. And I think there are so many other people out there that, that feel the exact same way. So thank you so much for your time this evening. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, I I just I want to be there. I want to be an inspiration to anybody. I, I, I that's my that's my main thing is just I want to inspire people to uh, be themselves. And you know, if especially if they they're looking into becoming actors, I I I hope that I am an inspiration to folks that are aspiring to to become actors because you can do it if you're trans. It's possible. Absolutely. And there, there are roles. We need more actors and actresses of oh, yeah. every gender identity, right? We, if you, if you feel like that's your path in life, go for it. Yeah, please do. I, <laughs> we need you. I wanted to ask you to hang tight for just a second here. I want to take a moment to talk about our next show. So uh, we are actually Absolutely. going to take a week off, but in two weeks, we're going to return with a, a live guest, Patricio Manuel. And Pat is a professional boxer, and he is the first out trans man to win a professional boxing match. So we'll be speaking with him about his journey, challenges along the way, and the current state of transgender individuals in sports. So that should be a fantastic conversation. Awesome. Pat is an amazing individual. So please join us live in two weeks. That's May 7th at the same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And as a reminder, if you'd like to get notifications when we go live, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Trans IRL. All of our past episodes are up there as well. On Facebook, we're Trans IRL Show. And on Instagram, we're Trans IRL, where we're like, what, we're like 10 followers away from 5,000 right now. So we're getting so close. If you follow oh, us God, on Instagram, you can submit questions early to the show. So uh, please give us a, a follow over there as well. We'll go ahead and bring everyone on here really quick. Ellie, thank you again so much for your time here tonight. This has been a really wonderful experience. And it's nice to get to know you better. We've been following each other for a while on Instagram, but we really haven't had a chance to like sit down and like really talk through things. <laughs> That's true. It's been great. Thanks so much for hanging out right. chat with us too. Uh, it was great to, to have you with uh, all of our uh, regulars, uh, yeah. Christy, Rachel, Louise, and uh, Eva, and uh, someone named Addison, who's there with us as well. <laughs> Thanks everyone.